we're going to make a couple of healthy snacks today. Hopefully you like them. And um, before we get started, just a minute about me, a short, less than a minute, is I've been cooking uh, professionally for 40 years. And I have worked kind of all over the country, uh, New York City and Hawaii and Chicago. And, and I own a business in Chicago that feeds preschool kids. And every day we make really healthy, all fresh, lots of food, like 4,000 meals a day for, for kids that are uh, two to five years old. So we have a lot of experience serving kids. And before that, I worked in fancy restaurants uh, in mostly New York and Chicago. And so uh, we're, the, the, before we start making the two healthy snacks, which are banana chocolate oat clusters and Greek yogurt with a uh, uh, ran, ranch dip with uh, baby carrots, which you can eat with any vegetable, uh, I, I'm gonna wash my hands. And so if people out there are gonna cook along with me, that's great. If I go too fast, send somebody a note about that and we're recording it so you can always replay it and slow it down or pause it if I go too fast. So I'm gonna start by washing my hands. Please join me. Yeah. We're gonna start by peeling three bananas and, and smashing them up with a fork. And, and that, oh yeah, first, let, let, so, so it's helpful, to, it's helpful to have a bowl. I'm gonna preheat the oven at uh, 350. Uh, so that got started. And then I have forks to smash the bananas and a spoon to mix, a spatula to uh, take the cookies off the cookie sheet, a, a cookie sheet that I've, uh, misplaced, but I'll find it. Um, measuring cups, these are really important, right? You can do a lot of math with these. Um, and then all the ingredients, which you have on your recipe. And then I have a serving plate that I'm gonna put them on when it's all done. Um, and that's what you need for the uh, first recipe. So I'm gonna start with a, I, I have a little knife and this will just help me peel the bananas, but you don't need a knife. You can just peel the banana like you normally would. And since my hands are clean, I'm not gonna wear gloves. A lot of us don't have gloves at home uh, anyway. It's really helpful, excuse me, to have really uh, uh, ripe bananas, like the riper the better, right? And these are great for that. I take the little end off, some of that hair. And now this is what it looks like. And I'm just going in with the fork. And Lindsay, Erica, let me know if people, you know, if they have any questions, people can ask questions anytime uh, while I'm working because I'm, uh, it's okay to interrupt me. And while I do this, uh, I want to talk about how it's sometimes when I, I have two daughters, they're older now, they're like almost 30. And we cooked a lot together when they were young. Uh, I raised them in a town called Oak Park. So that's a few hours away from here. But it's really, it's really fun to cook with the kids. And the other thing that I learned when I cooked with my kids is that it was really fun to go shopping with them. And I would give them math problems like in the produce department. Things like, like if I wanted five or six bananas, I would say, I want, go find me, do the equation 10 minus five and go get me that amount of bananas, for example. Or three times two, I want three times two red apples. And um, so they got to do a little math. They got to pick up their own food. I taught them how to look for blemishes on the fruit and vegetables to buy the best ones. And they really were engaged in the cooking process from the beginning. So if you have time, consider taking your kids shopping and having them help you pick stuff out. Uh, okay, so that's smashed really well. Now we're going to start putting things in to this uh, dish, like the oats. Everything goes in at once. It's a pretty simple recipe. So I need the measuring 
uh, cups, and this calls for two cups of oats. So there's one. And this is really great for young people to practice just this hand to eye coordination. You know, they don't have to pour straight from the bag like I am. And there's the oats. And the kids love to bake, especially, you know, these kinds of items, cookies. Let's see, we'll put the butter in, uh, the, the peanut butter in next. And we have this already portioned out, right? So it's really, it makes it pretty simple. Um, and then I have a, a spoon here. And I'm gonna just get this out. It's not a perfect science for sure. Um, I'm gonna use my finger. Yeah, that's great. And then rinse. People are still on the oats. Okay. So I'll go solve. Other stories about taking kids shopping are things like go pick out a cereal. This is one example. Like I would have them go pick out a cereal that didn't have sugar in it, right? So they had to read the ingredients. And those ingredients labels are complicated. So that takes practice that might not be the easiest for like the littlest kids, right? Um, because at the end of the day, what, what I'm committed to is like training kids palates, hopefully to crave fresh food and to crave scratch cooked food, like home, homemade food and, and healthy food. And, and, and I think it's helpful if we start them at a young age, as we get older, it's really hard. I know all you adults out there. I, I'll just talk about myself. It's really hard to change the way we eat. Really hard. Once I buy a pint of ice cream, I just keep buying ice cream, right? So my whole life has been, how do we get kids to eat well when they're little? So they want it the, the rest of their life. So they're a little healthier. I mean, this COVID has shown us that uh, you know, the unhealthier we are, sometimes we can be pretty sick. Um, the next thing that's called for is the cocoa powder after the peanut butter. Yeah, I have a helper here. And it's calls for a quarter cup. So I'm going to, I've got, oh, the quarter cup, it says all the measuring cups are uh, labeled, right? And so this is a, this says quarter cup, right? And so I'm gonna, quarter means one fourth. and a quarter means one fourth, right? That's great. I, so it's best to have it level. So and just to remind them that we didn't portion everything. Oh yeah, everything's not portioned. So in the, in the cocoa you got, you got more than a quarter cup. So maybe don't use it all, right? And use your measuring uh, spoon cup. Okay. So that's that. And then the applesauce, like the peanut butter, is portioned, right? And so we're going to uh, open that and uh, use another spoon to get it all out. Baking is an exact science. So, excuse me. So with baking, um, like sometimes some of us don't like to follow directions. I'm, I, I sometimes don't like to follow directions. Sometimes I like to do my own thing, right? And sometimes in cooking, like if you're making meatloaf, you might not have to follow the, the directions exactly. But with baking, you have to follow the directions exactly or it's not gonna come out and it could taste bad. So uh, get a close up of this. I need just one second break. Okay, so am I going, and now we're gonna put some honey in. It calls for a teaspoon of honey and the honey's labeled. There's more, 
then a, this is optional. It, it's gonna, uh, and then after you make these, if you use the honey, um, you might, uh, you might wanna use less honey or more honey. So it's okay on the honey to change it a little bit. This recipe is gonna come out. <clears throat> TSP, TBSP. Okay, yeah. So teaspoon is TSP and a tablespoon is TBS, right? So the tablespoon is way bigger than the teaspoon. And now I'll throw some honey in here. This is so fun for me. I kind of did a heaping teaspoon because I, I'm not, I'm off the sugar for a, a, a month. And so I'm Every time I see honey, I just want to eat it all. And I'm not going to do that because I promised myself that I'm not going to do that. But it is definitely hard uh, for me. And then we're going to put in some vanilla. Again, this vanilla is way more than you need. So it calls for, this is optional. I'm going to use the, uh, it's okay to use the honey uh, teaspoon and there's a little honey in the bottom, but that's okay. Same teaspoon level honey. I'm going to put it in and look at how much vanilla I have left. This is really strong. So you definitely don't, don't use all the vanilla. And if you don't have vanilla, it's okay. It's okay. And then a dash of salt. So I have salt here. I'm just putting a little bit of salt in, not a lot, a little more. Nobody, and uh, I'm going to use this again. Can you describe a dash more? Yeah, so a dash is like this. So this is a dash. So you pick it up with, you, with your fingers and you put it in. That was a dash. It's definitely not a scientific term, right? So this is exact, right? This is a tablespoon. It's exact. This is a cup. That's exact. This is a dash. Not exact. Okay. And now we're going to mix this up. Yeah, get nice and close. Everything's in there. The applesauce, the peanut butter, uh, the uh, cocoa smells really good. Everybody likes chocolate. Almost everybody likes chocolate. Okay, maybe talk about unsweetened oh, yeah, this is unsweetened cocoa. So there's no sugar in this. So this is not going to be an overly sweet uh, snack the banana clusters are not sweet so after you make these and you taste them and if you want more sweet you can put more honey into them they're a great breakfast and after and, and, and an afternoon snack so that's what it should look like there's no reason uh to mix this a ton and uh, the recipe calls for letting this sit for 20 minutes. We don't have time for that. So I am uh, just gonna make, I'm just gonna make these now and I'm gonna use a small spoon. You make it on a cookie sheet. This isn't the prettiest cookie sheet because we use it all the time. And we're just gonna put, uh, this is where I wish Adeline was here to help. We're just gonna put little dollops down, right? And we're spacing them apart. Now these particular clusters, they don't expand. So you, we can put them kind of close together. It's different than cookies that expand. So you can't put them right next to each other. These aren't, there's no uh, baking soda or baking powder, powder in here to make them like lift and get bigger it's like you put in chocolate chip cookies so you want them about the same size but again they don't have to be exactly the same size yeah do you guys notice any smells when you're doing this and how does it smell and is the consistency kind of weird i mean to me it's a little it's it's definitely a little different beautiful the oven's getting hot and uh, i'm going to have a hard time fitting these so i'm going to squeeze a couple small ones on the sides squeeze that one right there
So my oven is preheated. It's just about preheated. For these, it's helpful to have the oven just about preheated to preheated. And uh, I'm gonna pop these in the oven. And, and then we're, we're gonna take a little bit of a break to wash some dishes. And I think you might see a short video and then I'll be back to make the uh, ranch and, and vegetable dip. So now I'm putting these in the oven. I'm gonna put them. And I think that these go in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. And it's probably closer to 10. So, okay, that's the first recipe. Okay. Hi, Wilcox Wildcats. I'm Mrs. Brensman. I teach fourth grade. And um, today I'm here with my granddaughter in my kitchen where we cook every weekend. So um, the main reason I'm here is to tell you how important it is to cook with your family members. Only, uh, not only is it fun because you get to be together, but also you're learning math and reading and science. So this is my granddaughter, Kaylin. Kaylin likes to cook with me when she comes to visit. Hi, I'm Kaylin. My grandmother is Mrs. Brunsman, and we like to cook together when I visit. Cooking with an adult is a great way to work on your math and reading skills, and it is important to read directions carefully. If I'm unsure of a measurement or an ingredient, she will help me. Being careful is one, of, is one way to make sure we... So what we cook tastes great. Right, because we want it to taste perfect. Today we are making brownies. First, read the directions together. All right, okay, okay. so what do we need to do? We need to preheat the oven to 350 and coat the bottom of the pan with a nonstick cooking spray. All right, great. So I've already got the oven heating and we have the pan ready to go, sprayed it on the bottom. Um, now what does it tell us our ingredients are? It says we will need three tablespoons of water and one half cup of vegetable oil and two large eggs. Okay, so for that, we have our one half cup. These are your measuring cups. This is important, especially in cooking to make sure exact. So we have one half cup of water, our one half cup of oil and which one's a tablespoon, okay? This one. All right, and? Two eggs. All right. So we've got the right things. We're ready to measure. And we have the oven. So we're going to go ahead and open our, our mix. And make sure that we have everything we need in here. One important thing is when you're measuring, you can also use big measurements like this, which is really good, especially to make sure you get all the ingredients in there correctly. Then we need three tablespoons of water. Okay. One, two, Three. Nice. All right. And we need our vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. And I need a big spoon out of the drawer. And then how many eggs did it say on the recipe? Make sure you refer to it. Two large eggs. All right. So crack the eggs in here. Anything else? It says to make sure that we have blended it well and then to spread it in the pan and then we're going to bake it at 350 for 15 minutes. Yeah, for 15 minutes. And the very last thing it tells us is to make sure it is completely cooled off. So you're ready to 
All right, so we're gonna stop there. We're gonna finish putting this in the pan. We're gonna bake those delicious brownies. But remember, Wildcats, it's really important to use all these wonderful measuring tools that sometimes we don't get to use in class, but are really important in everyday life to get the best results. Remember to read carefully. If you get stuck, ask an adult. And by all means, make sure if you're doing something with an oven, you've got somebody to help supervise and make sure that food tastes fantastic. From Kaylin and I and my kitchen, thanks Wildcats. Have a great time cooking. So we're gonna make a Greek yogurt ranch dip. And this is a simple recipe. And this is kind of like an after school snack. And I have a bowl and a uh, spatula and I've got baby carrots and I'm gonna rinse them in this strainer, measuring cups and measuring spoons and the ingredients that we need that are all listed. And, and I have dill that I'm gonna pick and maybe you have a choice of you know, using this or not. And you have a choice of using other things like green onions or parsley. Um, and you can chop this or not. I'm gonna chop it a little. That's why I have a cutting board and a knife. But you don't have to. And the, 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 the other item, the banana chocolate oat clusters are mine are done in, in about three minutes. So don't forget to keep an eye on them. And one thing I remember from my kids being coming home from school is that they were always really hungry. We sent them to school with lunch. But they came home at three, four o'clock, just hungry. So, you know, we if we didn't have anything ready, it was it was like a drag, I would say. So we have some yogurt, plain non-fat Greek yogurt, and we need a cup of it. So I'm gonna just put this cup in the bowl and then pick up the yogurt. This is more than a cup, everybody. And then I'm just gonna spoon into the cup that I used a few minutes ago for the oats, the yogurt. That's, this is a, another fun thing to have the kids. Uh, that's about a cup. I can use almost all of it. Have the kids uh, look for, there's a million kinds of oat yogurt. And, and a million kinds of plain yogurt. There's stuff with fat, stuff with no fat, stuff with flavors. So letting the kids read uh, yogurt labels could be educational. Then we're gonna put a three quarters of a teaspoon of garlic powder. This is a half teaspoon. And I'm gonna make sure it's a half teaspoon. My, I don't have my glasses. I'm gonna ask my assistant. Yes. So this is, uh, again, that's a level teaspoon, right? And then I'm gonna do a level and a little for three quarters of a teaspoon, right? But you could also take a half teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon, three quarters of a teaspoon, and I could have done this and that, one of each, which I probably should have done for the kids. Uh, then there's dill, I'm gonna do the dill last. Quarter teaspoon of salt. So I have the quarter teaspoon in my hand. There's a level teaspoon. It, it, this calls for kosher salt. This is a little different than kosher salt, but it's okay to, for sure to use kosher salt. And then a quarter teaspoon of Worcestershire. So this is potent stuff, it's optional. You don't have to use it if you don't have it in, in your fridge. We happen to have some, we gave you some, so we're gonna put a quarter teaspoon of that in. We're not gonna put the cayenne pepper in. And now we're gonna mess with the dill. Uh, oh, there's onion, I missed, I missed onion powder. Half teaspoon of onion powder. Again, this is all about like a homemade snack to get away from once in a while, things like chips, right? Who, who doesn't love chips? Oh, I love chips. And can I eat chips every day? No, I can't eat chips every day. When people are younger, they can eat chips every day. That's the signal for the uh, oat clusters. So I'm gonna turn everything off. 
I think it's important that kids know that they can't turn on the oven or the stove unless the parents are around or, or, their, or their guardians are around. My kids, uh, that was a rule with them. And I think it came in handy. I just wanted them safe. I didn't want the house to burn down. And once you get them in the kitchen working, then they get confident and, and, and make sure that you're all on the same page about when they can use the oven and stove and when they can't. Okay. So we're going into this hot oven and we're pulling out our clusters. And like I said, they don't expand because there's no lifting agent in them. And that's what they look like. And then in, a, in a minute, we'll put those on a, on a serving plate. Okay, back to the dill. So dill, well, it's a beautiful ingredient. It smells great. It's definitely not for everything. I don't use, like I use green onions way more than I use dill, but today we're using dill because you, you don't have to use dill for ranch. I'm picking it is what I'm doing. So these stems are not really, they're not edible. You can eat them, but you won't like them, right? You won't get sick if you eat them, but they're kind of tough. So I'm picking the dill like this with my hands. And then I'm taking all these stems and I'm not using the stems, right? I'm gonna put the stems over there and I'm gonna compost them. And then I just, when I work on the cutting board, I like to work in the middle of the cutting board with a sharp knife. And I like to hold the knife like this, but you can hold the knife like this too, right? Either way, I like to choke up on the knife. Like you choke up on a bat, right? And then just, but you might not be cutting at home. You don't have to. I'm gonna just do one time. And then I'm going to take this and throw it in the bowl. I'm going to get everything off this cutting board. Right. And then we're going to mix this up. This is a simple ranch with the rubber spatula and the bowl. The bowl's a little big, but all I have is big bowls because all I do when I cook is I make a lot of food. And then I don't know what to do with all that food. So I give it to people like Miss Record, Mrs. Record, Lindsay Record. And, um, and now that I've met Erica on the Zoom, maybe, maybe she's going to get some food too someday. So that's it. And, and when you make food like this, you're not sure how it is. I like to taste, taste it to see if it has enough salt, see if it has enough pepper. So I use tasting spoons, not my finger my finger might be dirty, right? And, and it, let's say you have a family of four and everybody's sticking their finger in the ranch. That's a little, that's not sanitary, right? If I lived alone and it was, and I was making this just for me, maybe I would stick my finger in it. And so I just do a little taste like this. I don't, I don't take a mouthful, uh, but you can't take a mouthful. And that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I would put some lemon in that, but you know, that's another, that's, that's the next class. Then we have these carrots and I'm gonna just rinse them just cause I like to rinse all the food, all food before I eat it or cook with it. And then I'm gonna arrange this on a plate and make some room. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just put the carrots around. You don't have to, you don't have to present things like this if you don't want to. But sometimes, especially with the younger people, you know, they eat with their eyes. They really eat with their eyes. They don't say that. So kids don't say, mom, dad, grandma, I eat with my eyes, but they eat with their eyes. Um, and if Oliver and Adeline were here, they would be shaking their head. Yes, I eat with my eyes. So then I take the rubber spatula and I'm putting it in this nice bowl that Marnie probably got from her great grandmother. So beautiful. Doesn't have to be a beautiful bowl, right? We're trying to get it all out of there. So we don't want to waste anything. All this stuff costs money. So we get it all up. We don't smash it down. 
We want it to be up like that. So imagine the little ones come home from school. They had a good day. They did good on their math test. And Miss Erica was proud of them. Their teachers were. And this is sitting on the table. So nice. Right? And there's other ways that you can just, you could have just, we could have done it a different way. Might as well, we have the time. So now we're going to do it this way. We're going to put it into a different bowl. Again, another way to present. There's a thousand ways to present a food, right? I mean, I could have left it in the big, ugly bowl. And then there's like this, right? And they come home. And, and they're like, kids, I love you. Here's a snack, right? So nice. And then the other thing, like these oat clusters, right? The kids could come home and they, and they just came out of the oven or the kids help make them and you can eat them from here. Like, right, you make chocolate chip cookies or a cookie at home and people are just like grabbing it off the cookie sheet. That's fine, that's normal. Another way to do it is let's pretend the kids are bringing friends home, right? Then you just, you know, put it on a, on a plate. Everyone has a plate at home and we don't want to crowd the plate. So we're going to stop there. Our eyes like to see a little of the plate between the clusters. So you might not know you like to see the, 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 the plate, but that's just how it works with most humans. So you don't pack the plate. You can pack the plate. So that's one look. I'll just show you the other look, right? Now we're gonna pack the plate, which maybe is attractive for other people. Everyone has different eyes. So what looks good to Miss Erica might look not good to Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Record, right? So that's another way. And so everyone, we're all different. And that's the beautiful thing about food is that we're all different and we like different things. And it's helpful to try different things or we can get in a rut and eat the same three or four things every day, every week, every month, right? And then uh, it's just not as exciting. So I'm done and I'm, I'm open. If there's questions, I, I can answer questions and I hope I get invited back.